All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Then in the backyard, Pastor Perry. But hey, today is a beautiful day. It's a lovely day. It's an exciting day. So shout out to those who are on this morning. Y'all do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to our Instagram audience this morning. Shout out to our Facebook Live audience. Hey, my wife, Pastor Sophia, is on today. Miss Tiffany Barnes is on today. Miss Lisa Metcalf is rocking with us today. That's Atlanta's greatest on this morning. Hey, the Haywoods are rocking with us this morning. Miss Sheila T. Roby is with us this morning. Miss Bambi is on this morning. Hey, shout out, uh, 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 um, I said Miss Bambi, shout out to Miss Willa Robinson this morning. Lyndon Yates is with us this morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Minister Kim Simmons is with us today. Hey, shout out to Miss Cassandra James Moore. She's on. Brother Salilo is rocking with us today as well. Good to see you guys. Miss Jennifer Smith, I got to give you my pound today. You know I love you too. So, hey, do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Velo Wright is rocking with us this morning. Shout out to him. Appreciate you, my brother, for being on this morning. So listen, y'all, share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, shout out to the Haywoods again. Love y'all. Pastor Haywood, you be the bomb, brother. Good to see you, man. So again, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party, get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Miss Kelly Johnson is rocking with us today. Listen, I got to get some of this amazing coffee that my wife made, and then we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We're going to have a great day uh, in the Lord. So again, now get your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, whatever you're drinking this morning. Make sure it's non-alcoholic, but get it today so we can have a great time in the Lord. You know this coffee hot and good when they fog up your glasses. <laughs> now let's get to it this morning. A number of years ago, hey, I gave my life to Christ back in 1999. I was a guy who come off the streets. I'd been going to jail more times than I could count. Not only that, I there had been selling drugs. I'm running, chasing women. I'm all over the place. I'm doing me. But now, I get to a point in my life where I realize I need Jesus in order to change my life. So I surrender my life one night to Christ, and my life changed instantly. Stop drinking, stop smoking. Stop dating all of the women. My life changed. I guess something fell out the top of my, my house, but whatever. We'll deal with that later. But but I'm here I am. I'm just loving God. I'm in the word. I'm studying. I'm praying. I'm fasting. But all of the issues that I had in my previous relationship, I was married before Pastor Sophia, was festering. Everything that I did wrong, the previous person couldn't get over it because I did a lot of dirt. So here I am, I'm going to church and she's going to church and we're trying to get it together and it don't work. The pastor that we had at the time was a pastor who had been through hell and high water in a marriage that she had. And so the church was set up in such a way that you could go and talk to her about your problems and about your issues. And usually when a man would talk about his issues, he would get preached on across the pulpit. When the women would go in and and talk to the pastor about their issues and about their problem. It seemed as if she would side with the woman, come out, preach her issue over the pulpit, and belittle the men. So here I am, I'm struggling. I can't hardly take this. And one day in the Sunday school, she did everything but call me by name. And as she's teaching on me in a Bible in a Sunday school service, she looks at my mother as she's teaching and tells and says basically in the direction of my mother, you know that son ain't no good, and you uphold him, he ain't no good, and you know he ain't no good. My mother got tears streaming down her eyes, and I'm angry. I really want to go back to the streets and cuss her out, you understand? I'm being real now. I want to go back to the streets and cuss her out, you understand? But, but, but I realize I can't do that. I'm, I'm trying to live right. This pain is in me. We leave Sunday school, and I couldn't take it. I went home. And as I get home, I'm so hurt. I'm so devastated that I could get preached on across the pulpit like that, get beat up across the pulpit for something that I didn't even do. And I'm hurt to see my mother with tears in her eyes and to see her hurt. Did it for me. And I'm saying to God, and I'm saying to God, why would this happen to me? Why would you let this happen to me? 
and I'm, I'm throwing scripture in God's face. You, you said if I give my life to you, things will be better. They worse over here. And then God starts to remind me now that I am not what they say that I am. He starts to bring scripture back to me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And he starts to say to me, the place that I'm taking you to, where I'm taking you to in life, he's telling me you can't go there with the old mindset. So I had to strip you of some things in order to get you to your next. And he tells me, you got to put it behind you. The reality is I don't want to put it behind me. I ain't been saved that long. I don't want to put it behind me because the reality is I want to get even. I want to say something to you. I want to jack you up. I want, I want to come back at you because in the streets, if you do something to me, I'm going to do something to you. And if I feel you're going to do something to me, I'm going to do something to you before you do something to me. You understand? But here I am, and the Lord is saying you got to put it behind you. And I'm saying I don't, I don't want to put it behind me. I want to deal with it. And God starts to say to me that if you don't put it behind you, you'll never be able to go to the place that I have in store for you. And there are many of you who are watching me today. You refuse to put things behind you. You refuse to put issues and circumstances and problems that happened to you years ago. You refuse to put it behind you. And because you refuse to put it behind you, here you are. You are entering into a new relationship or you have entered into a new relationship. But here's what you're doing. You're bringing all of the baggage with you that you had from a previous relationship because you won't put it behind you. Because of what he did to you, because of what she did to you, because of how he treated you, because of how they treated you, because you gave your all to him or you gave your all to her. And, and all of a sudden they stepped all over your heart. They took your heart and stepped on it. For some of you, they took your heart and stabbed your heart. And so now you're carrying all of that issue and all of that problem. You're carrying it with you because you refuse to put it behind you. I'm talking to somebody today. You're going to have to put this behind you if you're going to go to the next level that God has in store for you. You're going to have to be quick to forgive people. And not only that, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to be quick to forgive people, but you're going to have to do this by faith. That you're going to have to be able to stand every single day. And say, I, forgave, I forgive the person for what they've done to me. I forgive this individual. I cannot carry this into my next day. I forgive. And listen to this. It does not mean that the pain is not going to be there. It doesn't mean that the pain is not there. I'm talking to somebody today because you are still carrying this stuff with you. You refuse to put it behind you. It doesn't mean that the pain is not going to be there. But what happens is when you start to confess it over and over again that I forgive this individual, I forgave this individual, you're telling the devil that you cannot trip me with this, you can't trap me up with this, you can't throw me off with this, you can't make me miss my break, you can't make me miss my miracle, you can't make me miss my road to my destiny, you can't make me miss it because where God is taking me is too important. So I got to put some things behind me and only you know what you got to put behind you. See, when you, give, when you give your life to Christ, here's what God does. You come to Jesus. The psalmist said, Psalm said, I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And, 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 and some would go on and say, and I'm glad. And some people would say, and safe am I. But watch this now. When you come to God, he does not leave you the way that you came. What does he do? He stripped me of everything that's holding me back, of every weight the Bible said, every weight and the sin which does so easily beset me. I got to get rid of that. Why? Because I got to look unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. So he strips me. He strips me of my old nature, my old attitude. He strips me of the sin. He strips me of my unrighteousness. And this, well then here's what he does. He clothes me in his righteousness. He clothes me in his love. He clothes me in his comfort. He clothes me in his peace. He gives me his wisdom. He gives me his understanding. He gives me a newness in Christ because he understands that I can't come into the kingdom of God with the old mentality that I have. So he helps me put some things behind me. Even when the devil stands to accuse you, he still helps you to put it behind you. How do you know this? The Bible says in the book of Zechariah, I believe Zechariah chapter 3 and Zechariah chapter number 4, the scripture says the high priest Joshua is standing in the presence of God and he got on filthy garments. When the Bible speaks of filthy garments, he's talking about he's, he's, he's got on clothes of unrighteousness. He's standing in the presence of God with filthy garments on. The Bible says and the devil is standing there to accuse him. And the devil is, is, is bringing all of these accusations against him because the devil has proof. He has evidence of what he did. But watch God now. 
as he's bringing the evidence, God says to him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Satan, Jerusalem rebuke you. And then here's what God says. Is he not a brand plucked out of the fire? So watch this now. And then God says now, he's a brand plucked out of the fire. And he said, take off his filthy garments and put on new clothes. And, and the Bible says in the spirit, the prophet Zechariah is standing there and says, take off his, his mitra and put on a new, head, a new headdress on his head. So watch this now. You can't move in to do something for God and God allow you to keep the old mentality. You have to learn to put some things behind you. If you don't put some things behind you, they will hold you back and you will never be able to grow and go to the next level that God has in store for you. May I tell you today that the Bible said offenses comes to every one of us. The Bible said in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulation. You're going to have offenses. You're going to have them. As long as you live in this earth, offenses will come. The devil will come to offend you. He will come to distract you. He'll come to destroy you. It will take place. But what you have to do is be equipped enough to handle it. Because if you can handle the distraction, if you can handle the stress, if you can handle the issue, if you can handle the problem, then you are ready to go to the next level. If you can't handle stress, if you can't handle the problem, if you can't handle offenses, then you are telling God, I'm not ready to be elevated. And so for many of you, you're going into this circle, the circle of routine. This is where you are. It seemed like yesterday I just had to deal with that issue. But I dealt with that issue last month. I dealt with that issue the month before that. And the month before that, so here I am, I'm rolling around, and I'm going around. And the reason I'm going around is because I have not overcome. I did not conquer. I did not put it behind me. See, when you make the decision to put something behind you, that doesn't mean that you pack it up and put it away only to go back and visit it again. No, no, no. See, see when you put something behind you, that means you evict it out of your life. You throw it out of your life. You, you take it and you, you get rid of it. I, I'm not passing it on to anybody else because to pass it on to somebody else is to pass my problem and my issue on to them. But I'm putting it behind me. Why, how do I put this thing behind me, Pastor? I destroy it. I get rid of it. I throw it in the trash. I get rid of it. I get rid of it totally because if I don't get rid of it, then and I keep it in my home, even though I got it packed up nice and neat, Put it in the attic or put it in the, put it in the garage somewhere or put it in, put it in, put, put in your little outhouse or wherever you got you got the potential to go back and to visit it again. See, see, this is why I'm, the Bible does not tell you and I about breaking the yokes. See, see, watch now. The Bible says the anointing removes burdens and destroys the yokes. It doesn't say it breaks the yokes because whatever is broken has the potential to be put back together again. But when it is destroyed, it can never be put back again. Be put back together again because it's been destroyed. It's been obliterated. You have to make the decision today that you are going to obliterate those things that are holding you back. Some of you now are still angry at him because he left you for a younger woman. You're still angry with him. Why are you angry with him that he left you with a younger woman? I gave him the best years of my life, Pastor. Why would he cheat on me? We got children together. Let me help you today. You knew he was a cheater from the beginning. It was You already knew it. The telltale signs were there. Something on the inside of you told you he was like that. But here's what you did. You omitted it. You pushed it away because you wanted to be happy. You wanted to be excited. You looked at him. He looks good. Oh, my God, girl, I may not find another good-looking man again in my life. So you went for that, and you omitted the telltale signs. And now any man who comes into your life now, you judge them based on what the previous person did. There are some of you who are watching me today because your wife mistreated you. She talked down to you and she's supposed to be saved, sanctified, and that with fire. And she's always, even though both Shondo and all of that, but her character, when you look at it, you're like, wait a minute. You, you ain't you, you what you the way you acting right now is not the Elo Bashata. You you acting like a hellion. You acting like a fool. And so you're wondering, did I make a mistake? Why in the world did I try to not with you? Why did I connect with you? Why did I get with you? I done made a big mistake here. I and you're frustrated and you're irritated and you're agitated. But the reality is you ain't going nowhere. And because you're not going nowhere, why won't you just put it behind you? Because if you can't put it behind you, that means you will always bring it up. 
If you can't get rid of it, you will always bring it up. Let me say it again. If you can't get rid of it, you will always bring it up. So guess what will happen in your home? What you couldn't get rid of will always fester in your home. So now you will never be able to see her as the woman of God. You will always see her as the woman who's always creating problems and causing issues. You got to change how you see things. You got to change how you look at things. You got to put some stuff behind you and you have to make the decision that, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. There are some of you today that you will not let go of, pre, of, of, of friends. Friends who don't love God. Friends who won't go to church. Friends who always talk to you about God in a negative way because they truly don't believe. So here you are. You're holding on because these are my friends. I've been friends with you for a long time. I've been friends with this person, friend with that. But, but you forgot the dirt that you used to get into with that friend. You forgot the trouble that y'all used to get into all the time. You forgot that. You forgot that you are a creature, new creature in Christ. And because you're a new creature in Christ, you've been picked out and set apart. And if you don't understand that you've been picked out and set apart and that God has called you out from among them, then guess what you will always do? Keep yourself in harm's way. So here you are. I'm saying sanctified, that with fire. But you're still drinking from time to time. And the reason that you're doing it is because you're hanging out with them. It's an influence that's over your life. And you can't let it go because this is my friend. I've been with them for a long time. Listen at this. If you're going to live for God, there's some things you're going to have to give up. If you're going to live for God, there's some things that you're going to have to give up. Let me say it to you one more time. If you're going to live for God, there's some things you got to give up. you got to let go of some stuff that's holding you back. When I got saved, I got radically saved. I did not stick around and hang around with people I used to do dirt with because I know that it won't be long before Reverend will go back to doing the dirt that I was doing. So I had to walk away from stuff. I can't hang out with men who, who cheat on their wives. Can't do that. Can't hang out with women who talk. You you know, you can't hang out with women who talk bad about their husband because it's going to be an influence on you. So you can't let it go because these are my friends. Listen to this. The Bible makes the point to tell you and I that you have to give up some stuff for the cause of Christ. You got to give it up. The Bible tells us that you're going to have to give up mother, brother, sister, and father. You're going to have to give that up. You're going to have to give that up. Well, what do you mean, pastor, I got to give it up? That means I can't talk to them? No. But you got to put God first in your life. He has got to be for real, for real, the head of the church in your life. If God is not number one in your life, there are other things and other people who are number one in your life. And before you know it, you'll be back talking the way you used to talk, acting the way you used to act. And now all of a sudden, when you leave from them, it's hard for you to detox because you got all of their thoughts and all of their ideas in your head and the devil uses it now because your mind becomes the playground for the devil now. You was hanging out with them and all of a sudden all the thoughts and the ideas and they bringing up the old stuff that you used to do and you reminiscing. And, and next thing you know, they talking about, yeah, girl, what happened to what happened to the man you was there? Oh, you saved now. You don't drink when you, you, don't, you don't do none of that. And before you know it, all of them seeds have dropped in your spirit. And so now hear it all being brought back up to you. And so now you got another fight on your hands because you can't let this stuff go because the devil has deposited in your spirit. All he wanted you to do is get you around certain people so that you can be distracted so that he can destroy your life. You have to ask yourself the question, am I really living for God for real? Or am I just being, am I just wearing the Christian clothes? Do I just know the Christian language or am I living for Christ for real? And some of you are watching me today. You know that I'm telling you the truth. You got to come out from among them. The Bible said, come out from among them. The scripture said, be ye separated from them. And the question is, are you really, come, have you really come out from among them? Have you really separated with them? Listen, I'm not going to Vegas with you. I'm not going to Vegas with you. I'm not going. I'm not going to such and such place with you. I'm not going to hang out with you. You understand? If I if I'm with you, the line in the sand is going to be drawn. You already know who Reverend is. What Reverend does? You understand? I'm gonna let you know that up front. This is who I am. This is what I do. I'm not going to compromise it. So listen, if you want to be a part of this circle, you want to enter into my space, you have to respect that. This is who I am. I'm not changing for you. I know what God has done for me. I know where God has brought me from. I'm not going to compromise my integrity because I refuse to put my past behind me. The Bible tells you and I, when we look at Philippians chapter number three, the scripture says, forgetting those things, what y'all behind? I need y'all to get this. Forgetting those things which are behind. And the Bible tells us to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to put behind you in order to get to your next level in Christ? So I make, this, I make, the, I make the thing known right off the top. But Pastor, that mean you don't go hang out with family members? 
Of course I hang out with my family members. I'm a laugh. I'm going to joke. I'm going to have some fun with them. I'm going to eat some catfish with them. You understand? I'm going to do all of that. But I ain't going to compromise who I am as a man. I'm not going to compromise who I am as a pastor, as a preacher, as a Christian. I'm not compromising who I am because if to compromise is to give the devil an opportunity to walk in your life. And if he walks in your life, he'll destroy your life with pastor. But I've been with them for a long time. They, they ain't, you know, I don't know. I don't know, pastor. Listen to this. This is how you know that they don't respect you at the level that you should be respecting. You say you're a Christian. This is how you know they don't respect you as a Christian. They come around, you come around and they still cuss and drink and smoke in front of you and it ain't even no big deal. The reason that they do that is because they have no respect for you as a Christian. And the reason they have no respect for you as a Christian is because you have shown them that this is who you really are. So why in the world would I stop drinking in the front of you if you drink? Why would I stop doing this in the front of you if you have already shown me that this is who you are? You compromise your integrity and your character in front of them. And so guess what? It used to be when you come around somebody they know and they know you're a Christian, if they curse, they say, oh, excuse me. Now they don't say excuse me anymore. It's because you emanate to them that this is who you really are. This is who you are. You just like them. So they're not going to, to, to say excuse me. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. You understand? There's a level of respect that should come with this when you really walk this thing out. Watch now. Migo says you got to walk it like you talk it. You got to walk this thing like you talk it. If you don't walk this thing like you talk it, then your words are just sound, just reverberating on the winds, and that's it. It's not doing anything else. So your mindset today must be, I got to put some things behind me. And putting some things behind you means sometimes you got to put family and friends behind you. You got to be careful that you do not allow your past to stay in front of you. I'm talking to somebody today because if you allow your past to stay in front of you, you can never get elevated. See, watch now. When you don't put things behind you, you interrupt the rhythm that God has for your life. Let's deal with the rhythm. God does everything by rhythm. Everything he does, he does by rhythm. The wind blows, it's a rhythm to it. Your heart beat, there's a rhythm to it. Watch now. You sow seed, there's a rhythm to it. It's called giving, receiving. There's a rhythm to it. Everything has a rhythm to it. It has a rhythm to it. See, if the rhythm is interrupted, then watch what happens now. Then something will become destroyed. If you look at your car, your car has a rhythm to it. Watch now. The engine makes sounds and it reverberates. There's a rhythm to it. There's some combustion that comes from the engine. And guess what happens now? If the, if the combustion doesn't have an outlet, then the rhythm is interrupted and the engine gets destroyed. What, what's the outlet? It's called your exhaust pipe. So whatever, the combustion has to come out and it comes out behind you. Did you not know that? That it comes out behind you? That it doesn't come out in front of you? It comes out behind you because the combustion should never be in front of you. It should always be behind you. Did you not understand that there is a rhythm with your body? That whatever you ingest must be, must be digested and must be eliminated? This is, this, is, this is why you have a backside. There is waste must come out of you. If waste does not come out of you, it will destroy your entire life. And there are people today, you are allowing the rhythm to be interrupted because you refuse to put things behind you. You refuse to put it behind you. You argued with your husband two weeks ago and you're still mad. Walking through the house and you won't speak. Walking through the house won't talk to each other. Walking through the house got an attitude. Won't be intimate with each other because you're angry and you're upset. You're angry and you're upset with your children. And you walk through the house and you won't speak. You won't talk. If you do speak to each other, it's with an angry, nasty attitude. It's because you won't put some things behind you. You got to learn to put some things behind you. There are some of you who are watching me today. You refuse to put all arguments that you had with your sisters behind you. It still festers in you because you won't put it behind you. You won't put it behind you. They looked at you as being the black sheep of the family because you were out doing some things that they wouldn't do. Maybe you were a little bit promiscuous and they wasn't. Maybe, maybe you were out saying, you know what, please, I ain't finna hang up in this house. Like, mama want us to stay up in this house all the time. We can't do nothing. Can't go nowhere. We can't do nothing but just, just go to school, come home and work and go to bed. That's all we can do. We can't do nothing else. And so you, you the bold one. I'm stepping out. 
Shoot, I'm going to have me some fun. You got trouble more than the rest of them. And so now everybody looking at you like you crazy. And so now they got issues and problems with you. You feel the animosity and the anger and the frustration on the inside of you. And here's what you won't do. You won't put that stuff behind you. You have to put this stuff behind you and work this thing out with your sisters. You need each other. With your brothers, you need each other. You were not born into this world to be separated one from another. You got the same mama. Why would you be separated? You got the same daddy. Why would you be separated? Do you not realize it's the devil who will not allow you to put things behind you? Well, some of you, you are angry with your mother. Because maybe she got a man in her life that it's not your that wasn't your daddy or it's not your daddy. And maybe this man didn't treat you the way you needed to be treated or respected you at the level that you needed to be respected. And maybe he's not treating you that way. And the reality is he didn't like you. The reality is he don't like you. And you're mad at your mama. But you never sat down with your mother and talked to her. And you're grown now and you refuse to put some things behind you. May I tell you today, in order for you to come out of the situation that you're in, you got to put some things behind you. You got to put that hurt and pain behind you. You cannot be angry and upset with your mother. You got to put that behind you. This thing is frustrating you so much that you can't talk to your sisters. You can't talk to your brothers because you refuse to put some things behind you. And here you are down through the years. This thing has plagued you. It's plagued you physically. It's plagued you financially. It's plagued you emotionally. It's messing with your mind. It's messing with your body because you won't put some things behind you. And the reality is, maybe your brothers do look at you strange. Maybe your sisters do look at you strange. But you can turn that negative into a positive. <laughs> they may look at me strange, but I can use that. I can use that as fuel. I can use that as a fire to push me to my next level. See, they look at me as strange, but it doesn't mean that God looks at me as being strange. Maybe I was created not to fit. Maybe I was created not to fit. You can use this. But because you refuse to do it, you refuse to put some things behind you. You carry this insecurity with you. And maybe you're a person who's watching me today that when you were in school, you came off as the bully. Nobody, nobody really didn't know that you really ain't want to be like that. It was because of some things that you were suffering internally that, that you couldn't tell anybody about. That here you are, you make everybody else scared around you because you're trying to make you feel safe. And nobody knew it. You look at yourself in the mirror every day and you you look down at you. Why can't I be like this one? And why can't I be like that one? Why mama show more attention to her? And why daddy show more attention to this one? Why this happened? And why this happened? And why this happened? And, and then and then they don't know. They don't know that there's some internal things going on with you. You couldn't put it but you can't put it behind you because you don't know how. So it came out in school. You came out as a bully, but nobody knew you were insecure. Nobody didn't know that you were insecure about your look, about your weight, about everything about you. You were insecure. And in order for you to feel safe, you had to make everybody else feel uncomfortable around you. But the reality is that's not how you felt. Nobody knows the tears that you cried at night. Nobody knows but God. Nobody paid attention to it. Nobody understood your hurt. Because when you came out, you put on this mask, you put on airs, and you made it seem like you had it together. But the reality is you didn't have it together. It's because of the things that went on in your life. It's affecting you now. Even when you go to work, it affects you. For some of you, it has affected you on the job. You can't get promoted. You can't keep a job. You can't stay on the job. You can't, you can't continue to keep working. You can't do this. You can't do that. Because you have not allowed this stuff to be put behind you. Today is the day that you put it behind you. Something happened. You got to put it behind you. And the way that you put it behind you is that you're going to have to forgive the person who hurt you. But here's the other thing. You're going to have to forgive yourself. I'm talking to somebody today. You're going to have to forgive the one who hurt you. And you're going to have to forgive yourself. If you don't forgive the one who hurt you, they, can, they have complete control over your life. They have power over your life. And your life will stay ruined because you won't put it behind you. You got to forgive you. Because you keep blaming you for everything that went wrong. And some things were out of your control. You couldn't handle it. You were not mature enough to handle it. You were not old enough. You had no experience. You got to put this stuff behind you. If you don't put it behind you, your life will stay stagnant. You got to put it behind you. And the other person that you have to forgive 
You're going to have to forgive God today. There are many of you who are holding God hostage and holding grudges against God because maybe your mother died and you prayed to God and he didn't stop it. Maybe your daddy died and you prayed to God and it didn't stop. Maybe your son died or your daughter died. You prayed to God and it didn't stop. He didn't stop it. He didn't, he didn't heal them. He didn't deliver them. And so you're angry with God. And so here you are. You're really pointing fingers in God's face. And you're blaming God. Today is the day that you even have to forgive God. There are some things that you will never be able to understand. But you have to chalk this thing up to God knows what's best for me. He knows what's best for me. And if you can put it back in his hands that he knows what's best for you, he'll help you put it all behind you. Many of you need to take a bath in the blood of Jesus. The psalm said, what can wash away my sins? And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Some of you cannot move on with your life because of what he did to you. He, you gave him your heart. You ain't know he was going to cheat with the women in the town. You, you ain't know that. You had a feeling, but you, didn't, you just thought that you would be the one, that you could change him and you could make things differently. And it didn't happen. So you're still hurt behind what he did. You, you, have, you have kids by him, and he done moved on with his life, enjoying somebody else, and you still carrying the pain, the burden. Some of you are carrying the scars of this relationship, and you won't let it go. How can God give you a new man who will shepherd your love, who will lay his life down for you if you can't put some things behind you? You got to put some things behind you. Well, Pastor, I'm, I'm 65, 70 years old. I, you know, my life has passed. If you don't stop talking like that, Stella got her groove back. You can get yours back too. Your life ain't over because you reached a certain age. Sarah got her groove back. You can get yours back. You're not too old. You're not too old. You have to put some things behind you. You can enjoy these latter years of your life. God can bring somebody into your life that'll be 10 times better than what you had before. You just got to know this. You got to know this. You got to know this beyond a shadow of a doubt that today is the day that I put some things behind you, behind me. Pastor, I've been trying to work things out with my brothers and they don't seem to want to work it out. That ain't your problem. You did what you were supposed to do. Now put it behind you. Pastor, I've been trying to work some things out with my sisters, and they don't seem to want to work it out. That ain't your problem. You did what you're supposed to do. Put that behind you because you ain't got time to wallow in no mess. You ain't got time to pay attention and focus on what's behind you. You too busy going to your neck. Well, Pastor, I gave my all to the job, and it fired me. So put it behind you. God can give you a better job that'll give you some peace on it. Maybe you weren't supposed to be on that job. You weren't built for that job anyway. That ain't your mentality. That ain't your character. I don't understand. Let me close it in. I don't understand why people go try to get babysitting business and when you know you don't like kids. That don't even make no sense to me. You don't even like kids. So why would you go to school to be a teacher? You don't like kids. Why would you go start a babysitting business? Uh, this is, you know, nappy care, nappy cares. You don't understand? Nappy cares of kids. You don't even like kids. You don't even like kids at all. And so you're going to start a babysitting business for the money? Listen, the devil is alive. You don't like the kids. You're going to cuss a kid out. You're going to beat a kid. You're going to you're gonna deprive a kid, throw a kid outside somewhere. And before you know it, you're going to be in jail talking about taking a collect call from the correctional facility. No, you need to let that stuff go. You weren't built for that. Find what you are built to do and do that. You're going to find peace in that. This ain't what you are. This is not who you are. Where you go? I'm going to go to school to be a nurse. So you go to Mississippi Delta Junior College and go be a nurse. You don't even like the sight of blood. Why would you even go be a nurse? You don't even like the sight of blood. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's in our thinking. You don't like the sight of blood. You don't, even, you don't even want to deal with some of the old people. You understand? They're coming in there cussing you out, calling you the N-word. You know you're not built for that. You can't handle it. So why would you go do that? Go find something else that you do. Maybe your best thing that you do is go on the, on the, on the riverbank. And fish, maybe you good at that. Go do that. Catch you some fish, cook the fish, and sell the fish. Maybe you good at that. Do that. And you're going to find you got peace. There's other stuff. You got to put it behind you. If you don't put it behind you, your entire life will be on hold and messed up because you refuse to put it behind you. That's my time today. I pray in Jesus' name that you were blessed, that your life was transformed and changed, and that you um, 
have found some healing today. So listen, do me a favor. Put your past behind you. You're looking at a guy who's been to jail more times than he can count. There's no way I could be a preacher today if I keep focusing on what happened to me in the past. All I can do is use that as a testimony. My past is just that. It's my past. Maybe you're the person who was promiscuous and you slept with a lot of guys, that you had more guys than the highway has had cars on it. Maybe, maybe you have, and, and it's okay. What you gotta do is put those things behind you. You, you just gotta put them behind you. You gotta put them behind you. Maybe, maybe you're the man that had more women than you can think of and you can count. You, you, you gotta put that stuff behind you because you can't grow and go to the next level but you can't put it behind you. Listen to this, Paul. If he couldn't put Saul behind him, he would never be able to write two-thirds of the New Testament. For some of you, you're still carrying your old nickname. And you're not even realizing you're a new, you're a new creature in Christ. You got to put that nickname behind you because the nickname reminds you of who you used to be and the things you used to do. You got to put that stuff behind you. If you put it behind you, your entire life will grow and you'll be able to go to the next level. <laughs> oh, man. Again, I pray you were blessed this morning and your life was changed and encouraged. So do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Listen, we want people to be blessed. We really do. Yeah, I don't want people to be blessed. The one thing that I do not do is hold grudges against people. People have done me wrong. I've had preachers who have did me wrong. Preachers I thought I was friends with had them do me wrong. And guess what I don't do? I do not hold grudges against people because I cannot allow you to have space in my head. I will block people, unfriend people, unfollow people for peace sake for me. Got nothing to do with them. And I can see them every single day. Say good morning to you. How you doing? Give them a high five and all of that and not hold grudges against them. I'm not built that way. So you got you to get to a place that you don't hold things behind you. You got to let it go. So listen, do me a favor. Get your seed in the ground today. I got to give somebody their day. So get your seed in the ground today. Get it in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Don't let the devil tell you that you cannot be a giver, that you cannot sow. Don't let him rob you of that, but get your seed in the ground today, all right? You need to be a giver this morning. So get it in the ground again. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground. Hey, you want to sow directly to me? You can do it through the cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Again, the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. You got it? Get your seed in the ground. Get it in the ground today. Get it in the ground today. If you want to sow to my wife, you can do it through the cash app for her too. It's the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Get it in the ground today. I got about four people I'm giving, there, giving a day to today, so don't go anywhere. Let me pray for you. Then I'm going to give these four people their day. Don't go anywhere. Please don't go anywhere. Hang on in there with me. But while you're doing this, make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite, right? So let me pray for you, right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name for your grace and your mercy to be released upon their lives. I pray, God, healing, God, to be manifested in their bodies now in the name of Jesus. For every person, God, who's being hunted by their past, for every person who's watching me in their past is holding them hostage today. I pray today, God, that you would help them to let it go. Help them to put it behind them so that they may press toward the prize that you have in store for them. There's a next level. There's a newness in you, God, that they have not experienced. Help every one of us to go there to this place. Help us to get rid of everything that's weighing us down and holding us back. And Lord, I give you praise and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen today. I pray for your grace and your mercy to be bestowed upon the country and the people who are there. God, I thank you right now in Jesus' name that favor is upon them now. Now, Father, I lift up the delta as a whole, and I pray for your grace and mercy to flow like a river throughout the delta. And, Lord, I give you praise for it. Now, Father, I lift up my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for divine healing to manifest in my town. I pray for divine peace, divine prosperity to flow into my town. But, God, I pray for your favor to be released on my town. God, I thank you that as I'm praying now, you are making my town great again. And Lord, I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, got to give somebody that day. Don't go anywhere, at least four people today. Uh, today is Miss Deidre Brown's day today. Whatever she wants, she gets whatever she needs. 
get supplied. It be her day today. Show her some love this morning. Uh, today, today is, um, dang, it was on the tip of my tongue right there. The day is Salilo Jones Day. Whatever he wants, he gets. Whatever he needs, gets supplied. It's his day today. Today is Miss Karen Yates' day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It be her day today. Hey, and today is Miss Cassandra James Moore's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's their day today. Oh, got to get one more. Got to get one more day today. And that day belongs to Miss Jackie Hankins. Wait a minute, she at work. Dang it. Miss JL. It's Miss JL's day. Whatever she wants. She gets whatever she needs, gets supply. It's her day today. Show them some love and some appreciation, all right? Miss Valerie Hankins is rocking with us this morning. Miss Sherika Nicole is rocking with us today. Thank you so much. Listen, y'all do me a favor. Y'all go get hooked up and get hung up boutique with Miss Sherika Nicole. Go do that. I'm telling you, she got you. She got you covered. She got you covered. She'll have you looking good. Uh, man, one of them outfits she got had my wife in, boy, I was like, oh, Lord, I can't even keep my hands on. Let me just, <laughs> I'm telling you, go get hooked up and get hung up, booty. She got you covered. Sometimes she do pop-ups. Be on the lookout for her pop-ups and everything. So, hey, this lady got multiple businesses going on at one time, so get, get hooked up with her. Listen, if you need some braids in your hair, you got to go find Miss Marlena Ferguson Clark. She can dip with the best of them. She got you covered. All right, listen, if you need somebody to pray for you, you got to go call Miss Karen Yates. She got you covered, too. Oh, man, there was one other person I'm supposed to give it today to. Thank you, Lord. Minister Kim Simmons, it is her day to day. Whatever Minister Kim Simmons wants, she gets whatever she needs, gets supplied. It's her day to day as well, all right? So y'all show her some love. Make sure, uh, um, Miss Cassandra James Moore, make sure you take Miss Irene wherever she wants to go today. Spare no expense. Fill the gas tank up wherever she wants to go. You take If she want to go hang out at, at Blue Lake and Fish half of the day, you got to take her down there and hang out there with her. Hey, if she want to go Jackson the shop today, you got to drive her down there. Wherever she want to go today, hey, you got to take pink. It's, she's a VIP, so you got to take her wherever she want to go, all right? <laughs> Let me get out this thing. <laughs> Let me get out this thing. Listen, if you're writing a book, Byron Williams, let me say, let me say this, Byron Williams, if you're writing a book, <laughs> Let me put one more time out there. Byron Wins, if you write the book, you need to call Miss Willa Robinson. I know you're not right one, but you need to write one. And call Miss Willa Robinson. She'll hook you up. She'll show you how to do it. She's a publisher. She does it all. She got you covered, all right? So you should look into it, all right? Hey, Miss Gloria Turner is on today, so shout out to you. Appreciate you for tuning in, all right? Let me get off the stand, but don't forget, get your seat in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seat in the ground if you want to sow. Through the cash app, it's the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Again, the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. If you want to sow to my wife, it's the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Hey, Pastor Perryman is also on Venmo. Hey, it's at Pastor Perryman at Venmo. You could do that. You could do it through Zelle. All you got to do is give my email address. Uh, some of you got my personal phone number. Hey, you could do that through Zelle. You got it, all right? Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. My auntie, Dorothy Perryman. It's on today. She's the greatest of all time when it comes down to teachers. So y'all show my auntie some love this morning, all right? So again, get your seat on the ground today. We appreciate you for everything that you do. And I declare and decree the thousand time blessing over your life right now in Jesus' name. All right, be blessed. We'll see y'all again tomorrow. Love y'all.